Welcome everyone to the Jenkins Pipeline Authoring SIG for Friday, April 10th. My name is Marky Jackson. I am one of the leads for this SIG. Thank you everybody that's coming. I see we have a lot of names here that are new and that first and foremost is awesome. I thank you so very, very much for participating. Before we do get started, I would like to remind everybody that the uh, this meeting is governed by the Jenkins Code of Conduct, which essentially just amounts to be nice to one another. Uh, don't be a jerk, so I don't have to kick you out. With that being said, I have placed a lazy link in the Zoom chat to the meeting doc. If you could please uh, jump on there and add your name to the attendees list. We do like to keep attendance just to know who showed up and whatnot. All those fun things. Generally, what we do when we uh, start this meeting for the new people that are here, we will walk the meeting notes and cover anything that are on the meeting notes. Uh, I usually, we usually turn that over to Liam. So Liam, I am actually going to make you the host. Okay. With the most. And the yeah. reason for that is, is because that will allow you the ability to screen share. Screen uh, sharing is off for everybody else. Oh, interesting. Okay. So without that, um, without, uh, take it away, Liam. <laughs> take it away. Um, one second, trying to, there it is. There's, there's my, so now I'm sharing uh, my screen. Can everybody see the blank screen? There we go. Here's the docs. Visible? Yes. Yes. No. Looks good. Okay. I couldn't, cool. mute, I couldn't unmute. Yes, it is good. Okay. Well, um, the only thing on the, the list, the agenda for today, I guess the open items was the, the roadmap. I'm going to ask, hand this back to Marky. Uh, how'd it go, Marky? Or is this still uh, something that you're uh, working on? This week, because it was a little bit crazy and chaotic for me. Uh, I will work on that between now and the next meeting. I have a rough draft up, but I did not feel that that would have been a good enough draft to put up because no. people would have been like, why are you putting this up? There's nothing I right. can do with it. So right. I will have that up before the next meeting. My apologies for not having that no up problem. right um, now. Let's see. Uh, so that's the stuff from last meeting. Um, we can, for this meeting, I guess, talk about items that we would like to see on the roadmap that we think would be good on there. We could also, um, Craig, I, uh, welcome Good to see you here. Um, and I, I guess we could talk about the uh, uh, in topics that you've been bringing up in uh, Gitter um, here if you want to do that as well. Uh, I don't know if you're uh, unmuted or anything, or you, if you have, I can't actually hear you if you're talking. No, I, I, I'm, okay, you were talking and now I can't hear you again. Yeah, I said I'm here. Okay, cool. Um, up to you if you want to add things. We don't spe have anything specifically on the agenda for today aside from, uh, I guess, talking about the roadmap. Um, um so i'm new, i'm new to this meeting and uh, i don't understand like how this sig is structured or anything like that well we're sort of establishing that <clears throat> as we go okay um the uh we're we've been relatively uh open-ended on things if people bring them up um we've talked about uh what personas the sort of established a set of personas that we're talking about the same set of uh, users that we're trying to serve uh, with improvements that we're going to make to pipeline. I mean, the, don't have it directly in my, and I really should. Uh, the charter for the, uh, for the meeting, for the, the SIG as a whole is to make the experience of writing pipelines better. So. So who 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 defined the charter of the SIG? Um, the SIG was started by Andrew and myself, um, Andrew Bayer, uh, who was who was working uh, actively on declarative pipeline. 
and yeah, now it's mine. Uh, and then things got busy, and Marky came along and re, re, uh, resuscitated this meeting. So that was the, the where things uh, where things came from. So uh, from Cloudbee's perspective, uh, where Cloud does pipeline fit into like? I, I, I'd oh, rather yeah. I'd rather not actually talk about this in terms of Cloudbees. This is a okay. Jenkins. I admittedly there are. I mean, I'm a Cloudbees employee, but I'd rather talk about this in terms of. But I'm I'm the only Cloudbees employee currently sitting here, um, so I, the SIG is independent from that. It exists as a Jenkins project. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but that, I I understand that, but. Uh, you can't separate pipeline from Cloudbees because, of course, you can. <laughs> Why would you think you couldn't? It's it's an open source project. So when you're defining Jenkins, you're defining Jenkins as an open source project. When you define yeah. Cloudbees, that, I wasn't finished. Sure, but I wasn't my, finished. From Craig, I was not finished. Okay, all right. Thank you. When you're defining Cloudbees, Cloudbees is a product. Cloudbees does not dictate the charter of this. SIG and they're very different. So that's one thing I want to make sure that I'm very clear. I'm not a Cloudbees employee. The charter's not dictated by Cloudbees. And if anybody tried to dictate that from a company standpoint, I, my guess is, is the board would get involved. It just wouldn't happen. Okay. So, I mean, the problem that I have is that uh, this technology was uh, developed by Cloudbees employees while they were working for Cloudbees. And unfortunately, the technology itself is very complicated and the barrier of entry is, is very high. So uh, for people, if there are people in the community that can come in and keep this going, that's good. But some of the problems that I've had with pipeline that interfere with uh, you know, the ability to write uh, and author pipelines, I mean, the only people that really have the knowledge to solve this are at, are at Cloudbees, unless there are people that can uh, come in from the community and maybe be mentored to, to come up with this. So, I mean, sure, if you have a, a roadmap and everything, that's good, but there are some fundamental problems with pipeline that interfere with some of the charter items and when the original SIG was developed by the author of Pipeline, it was very easy to say, oh, okay, you know, we can do all these things and work on the pipeline. Because like I've raised issues from like two years ago. That well, let's, let's, before we, I, I don't want to, uh, I, I don't want to cut sure. you off, but before we dive into the actual issues, let me just address a, a few of the things you said. In regards to the charter, the charter is uh, still open in right now. I'm Mark, sorry. Yeah, why don't we let Craig finish I'm this sorry. thing. I, I, know, I know that it's, there's, a, there's a bunch of things in there, but let's try and keep this, let's, let's uh, give reciprocal respect. Like you, you wanted to finish what you were saying, let's, so Craig, please continue, sorry. So, so I'm, not, I'm not against the charter, I'm just raising the issues that I have seen and the problems that I have had. And I'm hoping that some of the issues that I, I could I have raised could be, you know, acknowledged and addressed within the framework of this, um, of the SIG, because from my perspective, what I've done, I found problems in pipeline and I've reported the uh, bugs on uh, uh, JIRA and, and, it's, and some of the issues, they are valid issues. Oh yeah. But they, you know, because of, uh, you know, issues with people at Cloudbees. I mean, people have left the company, people have moved to other projects. Some of these issues have, have fallen through the cracks. And as someone who, I don't work for Cloudbees, but I use Jenkins heavily, and I don't have the technical knowledge to address some of these problems. Um, you know, so that that's the problem that I'm in. So if uh, I can, raised some of the, it, like I have, I found other issues, but the two issues that I raised, which I asked to be on the last uh, 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 agenda, right? They, they were like two, what I consider common ones. 
And, you know, if we could, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, have lists of bugs in pipeline itself that are tracked through the SIG, uh, you know, even if they're not solved tomorrow, but if, if there's some, uh, uh, you know, movement on those and if uh, the people who wrote this stuff are too busy to uh, help, but if you know people could be mentored to help fix these problems, um, you know, from my perspective, that would be a good outcome of the SIG. Okay, so <clears throat> how do I address it? So the problem that you're describing in terms of there not being enough technical knowledge, um, or the not we don't have the right people to work on things. Um, Craig, could I ask you to mute yourself when you're not talking, just because there's otherwise there's feedback. Thank you. Um, so that's that exists in all open source projects, um, and I understand that that your opinion from your perspective, there aren't there isn't enough technical knowledge outside of CloudBees to do this work. I would say that there that there also isn't <laughs> there isn't enough there aren't enough resources. Let's just be a be more to put some more general there aren't there is less resources than needed and that's true of any open source project um saying that there needs to be mentoring saying these are all these are all good ideas but they um they mm, they are predicated on there being more resources from one particular area that you would like focused on this thing, right? On the, on the issues that you're talking about. I, uh, I, I'll pick out at least one thing that you said, which is having a list of issues that, that are of interest to the SIG. Um, that, that is a great idea. We should probably do something like that where we actually start um, gathering, you know, issues in pipeline that are, that are high priority or just uh, of interest. Um, also having a list of issues that are good first issues um, for people to work on. Um, one of these uh, that you brought up uh, here, the, the need for the linter, that's actually um, the, and we talked about that a little bit, where it's like having the linter at a, you know, a validate now button in the UI, that's actually a really good first issue for, as an example. And as, as we said in Gitter, yeah, the, the, the barrier to entry is far, especially in working on some of the issues inside of pipeline is far too high. But <clears throat> that's, that's a reality of the situation. Um, saying, uh, if you're, uh, and just to, I guess to, to what I should do is set expectation. If you're looking at this SIG as a, as a venue to poke cloud bees to do more work that you think needs to be done in Jenkins, I don't know that this is going to be the place for that. I don't think you're going to, to achieve what you're looking for. Um, so um, this is a way for the community as a whole to organize. And um, if we find specific issues that we're working on or we need more resources, having, we'll have more luck getting you know, resources from CloudBees if this SIG is organized and has, and has figured out a direction and saying, okay, we wanna work on this area and this particular technical part is, it, we need someone from CloudBees to, to come give a presentation or do something like that. We can probably get that kind of resource, but just, hey, CloudBees, do more work on this is going to be not, is not going to be a very effective way to go about it. We're not going to, that's not, that's not going to be a res an outcome for this. Yes. Yeah, I think I would just echo that, you know, I do not work at CloudBees and I've contributed to the underlying pipeline plugging, you know, pipeline groovy workflow CPS, the workflow CPS groovy library. And I definitely sympathize this. There's a high uh, technical barrier to entry and it sort of involved just getting my hands dirty and diving into the code base. I would just say that like from a, as a plugin maintainer too, like it's not that no one wants to do this work, right? It's that there are so many different avenues for potential improvement um, I've got seven open issues on a repo I maintain that keep me up at night and it's just, you know, bandwidth is limited. I think from a mentoring standpoint, this SIG is sort of, while mentoring might not be the, the primary point, is sort of 
you know, it does that by talking about these issues and maybe uh, if there are people on the call that have that experience of where to look, you know, we can, we can start to do that stuff. But I just wanted to echo that it's not that people don't care about the issues. It's just, you know, there's hundreds of, if not thousands of open jury issues uh, and people are doing the best that they can to prioritize them. I would also like to add to that statement, and thank you very much, Liam, and Craig, I do apologize. I did interrupt you, and that was very, very unprofessional. I apologize. Uh, but I, I would like to add that uh, one of the main things is that if you, if you participate, people will help you. If you, and I'm not saying you, I'm more saying this in a general sense, if you expect people or if, if individuals expect people to just stop and focus on something else, we'll never get anything actually done. And, and as, as the word has been used here, it's a volunteer organization. I personally do not work for CloudBees. Uh, so we have to, we have to prioritize what it is we can do. If I will say to you, if you're interested in taking up some of these things, I personally would try to help you understand code base or uh, whatever I can do to make you successful in the SIG, because the more successful you are, the more successful the SIG is. So, so I will, I will just add that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So uh, from what Liam uh, uh, described, I think that is uh, if the SIG moves in that direction, I think that would be a good outcome for the SIG because from my perspective, I don't care who solves the problem, whether it's me or someone from CloudBees or someone from the community. Um, but on the other hand, yeah, I can't expect Cl CloudBees to do anything because I don't have any contractual relationship with CloudBees. So, I mean, that's, I understand how that goes. So, but I think that, uh, yeah, if we, if we acknowledge that this is a problem and we want to improve it and get to a better place, I think that would be a good outcome for this thing. There we go. I forgot I was muted. Um, so I'm going to just take a couple of notes. Notes from if I can get there. There we go. Uh, let's see. Um, direction and origin. And so, Craig, just to be, when you say that, what what that were you were you affirming? So you said you said two things. So okay. you said the thing that uh, you expect uh, that uh, you can poke cloud bees and get them to do things. That was not it. So the other thing that you mentioned, which is, I'm asking you to help me so I can type it out. Uh, so provide a venue to bring up issues and ask for help from technical domain experts uh, to mentor and help uh, fix the problems like whatever you said that was in that okay. vein. So, so um, I think, so the way that I'm looking at this, let me just see, uh, get that this here, to documentation um, These are, so the, the, the focus areas for the most part in here have been, are more around uh, kind of the how and like, okay, how do we, how do we do this? How do we do that? I think what, um, I think we probably need to add one more item to this to say to, to, that is what you are talking about here is um, um, this being a venue to um, discuss pipeline related issues and technical uh, and share technical expertise. Okay. Does that yes, sound? I think that sounds right. Yeah. Now, I mean, I do I, think, Liam, yeah, I, I do apologize. I do think if you go back to the to the actual landing page, does it have it? I think if you go to the bottom, I vaguely recall communication. Ah, okay. Yeah, but like, 
so this is uh, okay. Improving and curating. So that's that's fair. I, I think it's just it would be um, it might be helpful to add add this so that we're so that we're talking about the same thing. So that because I think part of what happened, what has happened with um, from my perspective, with Craig coming in and asking asking about these bugs was that there isn't um, all we were able to say was well that's not in the charter right, and what he's asking if 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 we say well. If instead what we had in, if we had something in the chart that says yes, you're we're totally on board with people asking te about technical issues in pipeline and getting help with working on them, then that would have been a more satisfying outcome for, for Craig and would have been more inclusive. It would have allowed give us a, given us a a scope of how we could uh, uh, help address like include Craig and his his perspective, right? The things that he was so asking about. So a common thing, I think one of the risks of opening up bugs is that it can quickly consume the entire meeting. But one oh. thing I try to do on projects that I'm working on in, in my job is, you know, dedicate a, per, a particular percentage of capacity towards like uh, SRE or continuous improvement. So if we were to expand the charter to include something like pipeline bugs, we could also include like to ensure that we keep making progress on the experience of writing pipelines, we're going to limit the uh, amount of, you know, bandwidth or capacity in this meeting to, I don't know, a third of the meeting or one meeting a month is going to be dedicated to bugs or something like that so that we can include it, but scope it in a way that uh, we retain some primary focus on experience. I okay. love that idea. Yeah, that sounds totally fair. Because you're right, as you said, there's thousands of bugs, we could spend all day all meeting, every meeting, talking about bugs, but um, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so can I just ask a question, uh, yeah. Craig? Would you would, would if we thinking about that? If we had say one meeting a month where the meeting was just a, you know a focus where we kind of like I know in other communities that I'm in we have something called walk the board. And we'll do that once a month where we'll actually go over whatever the project board is or whatever issues are open in JIRA or what I mean in, in JIRA or GitHub. If we actually did that once a month, would that be would that be good? It doesn't have to be once a month, but it could be like at some time interval. But uh, I mean if it is if the uh, if the charter of the SIG could allocate some time and resources to uh, tracking these uh, issues, I think that's that's uh, better than what is there right now, where issues basically fall through the cracks for years. So, well, so that I just I, I want to be sure that we're clear on this. Though tracking it doesn't mean that they'll get worked on by this by the people in the SIG. It means that we'll track them. Um, yeah. And and it, so that if someone wants them to work on them, they can come in and and will help. Uh, it will at least provide some like oh okay you'll need to look here here and here to work on that or something right. Yeah yeah okay. I mean providing some attention rather than no attention is an improvement in my opinion. Okay. So whether what interval we we do that, I mean that that doesn't have to be once a month. It can be like whatever works for the for the sake. So, Um, so, I mean, I guess, Mark, the question here is, uh, does anyone object to this, to adding this as part of the charter, as one of the items in the charter? I do not object. I'm a plus one for doing it. So, doesn't sound like it's an objection. So, yeah, let's, okay, this sounds, this is, this, this will help, I think, in the future. So, um, cool. Um, and maybe that's, Okay, so my background is in test. I would like to take on the task of creating something in our JIRA, in the JIRA that has a 
a list of pipeline bugs and a way to sort of say, here's the, the things that are on the radar, at least, I mean, it's going to be a huge list, but maybe there's some way of um, uh, organizing them in a way that, that uh, will help people find the find bugs to work on. So Does that sound good for people? I mean, like that's okay, cool. Great. Not just create, but organize. Google. Cool. All right. Great. Um, anything else? Do we have any other other topics to talk about, or do we want to? People have things they would like to uh, put on the roadmap. Yeah. Um, the reason I'm in this meeting is because I was trying to figure out what the roadmap of the. Jenkins pipeline is. Uh, I couldn't find that on the websites at all. Um, so I thought I'd come here and ask what, what the direction is. Um, and the reason I ask is uh, relatively new to Jenkins myself. I've been using it for a couple of years now and started with the declarative pipeline syntax, which I think was very new at the time. Um, and very quickly after getting started, realized there's declarative syntax and then there's this other syntax um, which is older and supports more features, um, but there's no there there is little clarity in, around um, which of those syntaxes is preferred, um, which one is going to be the chosen one in the future, um, who should be using what, that sort of stuff. Um, so it's hoping to to get some sort of idea from this group as to what they see is the future of the Jenkins file syntax vis-a-vis -vis the declarative syntax versus the older syntax. Um, uh, so what's, I guess, the older syntax exists, the newer one, the de declarative exists. I'm not, I'm not sure, can you expand on that I question a little bit? I think he's asking about scripted versus declarative syntax. Right. Um, yeah, that's true. What about it? Um, well, I think a lot of the newer examples use declarative syntax, um, but there's a lot of things you can't do in declarative syntax. So as a person trying to use Jenkins, you get so far using one syntax and hit a wall um, where you end up copying and pasting a whole bunch of things instead of creating functions um, and then have to fall back to this other syntax, which is similar but different. Mm. Uh, so it's not a particularly good experience for, for users. Yeah, one of the things that we were doing early on and uh, is we started creating personas. And in these personas, we're trying to address, we're, we're trying to, by using a persona, address a person where they may be coming in from. Like your entry point is I'm sort of a new user, but I'm not, you know, com like, you know, I know what I'm doing to a degree. And now I'm seeing some deficiencies and I need a little bit more guidance uh, and, and that, and I'm sort of not quoting you, but just saying in a high level. And that's what we're trying to address on the personas because the personas will match to uh, what we're calling a maturity model. And then we're trying to match that to our documentation is so we can see where the deficiencies are. Uh, and, and we have in some of the earlier notes, you'll see where, uh, where we have uh, the, the, the persona creation and then the, the mappings to the maturity model. And then we've had the doc sig in here who was also trying to help with get the, getting the documentation linked to those certain things. So we are trying to address that. Uh, I definitely know where you're coming from completely. So is, is the focus there 
around keeping what we have and improving documentation? Or is there actually uh, intention to like add more advanced features to the declarative syntax and encourage people to use that over script so, pipelines? So my question there is, so that they're, from the docs perspective, they're talking about documentation. Um, but the, the question is always, from my perspective, is always, um, what it, can you give me an example of what it is that you're talking about? Because yeah, so I, I can think of two specific examples using declarative syntax where I've run into mm -hmm. issues yeah, right. um, in, in the last little bit. Uh, one is like each of our stages has a, a post action that happens um, and it's the same for each stage and it's maybe five or six lines or eight or 10 lines. Right. Um, and if we have six or seven pipeline stages that I'm kind of copying and pasted. Um, and as a developer, that's taste bad to me. Right. Um, and on the second one, um, recently we had uh, a single pipeline stage in declarative syntax that we wanted to run across multiple nodes in parallel. Um, and again, relatively easy if you just copy and paste the block and stick it in a parallel uh, declaration. Um, but again, you're, you're copying and pasting. You're not, there's no language feature in the declarative syntax that allows you to express repeating something. So, um, so uh, this is a, probably a documentation and communication failure, but uh, Matrix actually does allow you to do that. Um, and if you haven't played with Matrix yet, um, you could, add, you could, that's, that is exactly what it's for. So, um, uh, but the, the, the fact that there hasn't been more sort of, uh, communication of that feature and how it works and, and what you can do with it. Um, that's at least some, to some, some degree on me. Um, yeah, I will definitely check that out. Um, I, I would did a lot of searching, a... but didn't find anything around how to run stuff in parallel, except falling back to scripted pipeline. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, if you can, so. Good, good point. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So I would take a step back and just talk about the difference between scripted and declarative for a second. Mm. And this is disclaimer. This is my perception of the two features. I definitely don't speak for the plugin maintainers at all. My, my understanding is that declarative is intended to be um, easy to validate and easier to write, right? It's not a programming language necessarily. It's a spec. Uh, a data structure that can be easily validated um, and have some functionality and then scripted exists for some more advanced use cases, right? I think under the covers, declarative syntax and scripted syntax are invoking the same things. It's just different facades for, for interacting with them, um, right? So to me that they both exist in parallel to support different use cases. Um, so it's not really like a, one is going to be more supported over the other. It's more about like how advanced of a, of a pipeline um, or how complex of a pipeline is probably a better, better phrase. Um, how complex of a pipeline are you trying to write? And if you need to do things like looping and you know, things like that that you would typically do with a programming language, scripted is going to be a better fit. If you just want to like run a bunch of make commands and maybe spread them across agents and have some post blocks, then declarative might be a better fit. Um, and I am very open to feedback if that is anyone else's different perspectives on the two there. Yeah, so my, my perspective is a little bit different. So how I saw this stuff evolve, uh, so I actually, I talked to Andrew Bayer like very early on, even before uh, uh, like declarative pipeline was around and he had a earlier, um, earlier prototype called Plumber where you could specify a pipeline in YAML. And then that, that kind of uh, didn't go anywhere. But basically, um, scripted pipeline was the first implementation of, of pipeline. And then um, the declarative pipeline came after that. And the idea was that declarative was a easier, um, an easier and more intuitive way to write a pipeline but still reuse all the same code and constructs. So it's like, a D, it's like a restricted DSL that tries to make a pipeline more readable. But 
I found when I've authored Pipeline, when I uh, tell new people, I point them to the, the new stuff because it's a little bit more easier to follow. But I end up using the script tag quite heavily to, and to me, the script tag is an escape hatch because the, the script tag, basically, it doesn't mean what you think it means. Like a lot of people think the script tag means, oh, I can put a shell script syntax in here, but it's not. The script tag means you can use any uh, groovy construct in that script tag. So what I end up doing in a lot of pipelines that I've written is I start out with the pipeline and, and the restrictive DSL, but then I use the script tag to do more codey kinds of stuff like loops and defining variables and things like that. And so, I mean, there was the intent of what this stuff was, and then there's actually what you end up doing to actually get things moving. And what, what, I, what I found is that I kind of straddle both things where I use the declarative pipeline, but then I use the script tag to do like more programming language kinds of things in there. And maybe that wasn't the original intent, but that's kind of what you have to do. I, I, the one clarification I would make just in case is you can't use technically any groovy syntax. Uh, Jenkins under the covers leverage is something called continuation passing style. Um, so that Jenkins pipelines can resume. Uh, the implication that that has on the code that you write is that everything has to be serializable because it's continuously writing the state of the pipeline to disk. Um, so there's a lot of common bugs that can come up where you write what is valid groovy code, but when you run it on Jenkins, it, it causes some issues because the, the objects you created weren't serializable. Um, that's definitely a nitpick, but I've, I've hit that many times, so I wanted to to throw that out there. Yeah, that's a very good point you brought up. Uh, to comment on what you were saying earlier, Stephen, um, around the use cases for scripted pipeline versus declarative, um, I think that's a good way to look at it. But in practice, as someone who ends up writing these pipelines for our software, um, you start off with declarative because it's simpler and the current documentation sort of pushes you that way. Um, and then you have a simple pipeline because your project is simple when it began. Um, but as your project grows, your continuous integration requirements or deployment requirements um, expand. And the, you have a pipeline written in the declarative syntax, trying or needing to and having to transition to a different syntax um, as your project scope expands is, is not easy, um, especially as the two syntaxes are like they're, they're somewhat similar, but they're different. Um, it's, it's, I think it's more difficult than it needs to be. And I think it's very common for people that they will start out with one and end up needing the other. Um, so coming back around, uh, I noted that matrix exists, but may not be easy to find for some of the, some of the scenarios that it's, that it really actually does apply to. Um, and you're right. I think the, the way that I've uh, wrote the documentation for Matrix, there probably needs to be a, something more added to it to say, hey, if you're to the to the parallel section to say, hey, if you're trying to do this, <laughs> go over here, you can get that. Um, but uh, the other, th there's two things that I want to bring up here. Uh, one, er the the consensus seems to be, oh yeah, you do declarative for the simpler things, and then when you when you grow up and 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 uh, are, are ready to take on the real thing, you go to your scripted, and I'm like, yeah, that's not what, that's not the design intent, in fact. Um, the intent um, has always been for declarative to, sim it's similar to the n now, uh, uh, to, to declarative and blue ocean were created sort of side by side, and the, the descriptions are actually very similar. Declarative is, an opinionated way of going of, of doing pipeline, and for for me, the main thing that, you, that when people bring up, oh well, there's I, I, there's something that I need to do, but I can't do it in declarative. And my question is, what is that? Because um, there's we as as a sort of a short like, okay, I'm just going to fall back. Would be uh, put something like 
for the, the case that you mentioned, which was you have the, the same five lines that you need to do a bunch of different places, that's what shared libraries are for. But I'm not, I'm not completely satisfied with that answer. I mean, that's an answer that I have to give because that's like, well, if you need to do it, there it is. Um, but uh, I, I'd like to see that addressed more locally uh, or the ability to address something like that locally, right? Within your Jenkins file. So you're not having to go out to um, a shared library, create a com completely separate repository just to do some basic code reuse, right? Um, so, I, and in fact, I've even reached a point of like, okay, we don't, uh, for the original version of, original releases of declarative, there was very much a, no, we're not gonna do variables. And I'm like, yeah, but there are cases, <laughs> you know, where it makes sense. Um, and it's not an, e the thing is, it's not the easiest thing to solve within the, the structure that we're trying to establish. And the, the, on the flip side from this, when people say, well, I can't do X in declarative, the, some of, sometimes that X is stuff where I have to say, why are you doing that in your pipeline? Um, yeah, you can do that inside of Jenkins, uh, but you have to understand that you're not, that you, uh, that you're doing things that are actually more expensive inside of Groovy and inside of the CPS framework and you're running them all on your master. It's maybe not where you want to be doing that. So there's sort of a two-sided thing. One is, yes, let's push the boundary of, of declarative so that it hits, hits the right mark of complexity and, and uh, uh, feature set for what people are doing in pipelines. But then at a certain point, I, I'm, I'm sort of, as the main, the main maintainer right now, <clears throat> sort of continuously asking myself um, where, the, where the line is that we should stop, right? <laughs> and when people go over that, having to, be, it be, having to go, okay, the, the, the reason why you're ending up in scripted there is, not because we have a gap in our features that we want to fill, but that you're trying to do something that we don't want to, that we actually don't, that we actually want people to discourage people from doing. And that's not clear right now what that line is, right? Because it's, it's continually moving. There are definitely gaps, um, but I want to hear about them. And we, this is another example of like, we should have um, a set of, and I'm hoping to put this, put this together as part of the SIG, a set of, items on the on the road on the roadmap that are like okay here's what we're going here's the gaps we're going to fill and then when pe then after those we should be sort of pushing back on people to go okay no don't do that <laughs> right yeah but I, I i michael i sympathize all the points you have brought up are valid i have encountered these things uh myself and so uh you know, keep, keep bringing up these points. One, one thing that I would maybe recommend, and I've done this myself, when I find weird things in pipeline that I don't understand, I ask the question on Stack Overflow. And then if I find a solution or if someone else finds a solution, I, I post that solution to my question on Stack Overflow. So at least I have that, uh, you know, documented somewhere. Um, you know, it's not ideal, but it, it's, it's better than nothing because I understand for people who are working on pipeline, you're usually under the gun on something that you have to get done. And you don't, you don't want like the technical decisions about, okay, this is a, an opinionated implementation or whatever to get in the way of what you're doing. Um, cause I mean, it's not your problem. That was something decided by someone else a long time ago. But, you know, do, do raise the issues. And if you find solutions to the, your problems, um, you know, put them somewhere where other people can benefit. Because I, I use Google a lot to, you know, and I look at Stack Overflow a lot to ask questions and also find answers to questions that I have about pipeline. Okay. 
We just are about uh, equally... 10 minutes out. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I just imagine an equally interesting and horrifying idea of being able to do something like go templating for your declarative pipelines uh, to be able to augment your declarative syntax with some of those more scripted functionalities. But please do not actually implement that. <laughs> I'm envisioning a whole bunch of like ghost Greek templating everywhere and just horrible and everybody's like, why doesn't this work? And those are things, those are nightmares like I don't want to have. We'll use Jenkins for that too, right? It'll be one Jenkins job that builds mm -hmm. a Jenkins file and creates a new repository, adds it to Jenkins. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're about 10 minutes out. Uh, it's a great conversation. I think it, it's very important to this SIG as well as the overall community. Does anybody have anything else? Yeah, I have one thing. Where are the meeting minutes posted? Because I couldn't figure out where to find them from the uh, website. In this, uh, in this Zoom chat is a link to the docs also in the Gitter room before every meeting I post a link to the minutes as well as to the zoom link for the meeting can we uh, can, you, can you add a link to that on the web page on the yeah on the sick page it's not there uh, or is there a reason not to so it renders it very weird that's why it was removed. Somebody actually complained the way that the doc, the link in there, I think is fine, but the way it got, it rendered the link in, in the actual web page. So when you were scrolling, you hit the dock and then you're scrolling through the dock. Uh, so I took oh, it out in the okay. last. Oh, it embedded it? Yeah. Oh, we, yeah, we can figure out a way to, a better, a better way to do that. There's, just I... posting a bare link, there's a way to, there's a way to do it. Okay. My only thought would be, uh, would that open us up to some random person finding the links and then being able to yeah. just go edit? I mean, so Craig, let me ask you a question. Is there a reason that us posting the notes in the, or, or a link to the meeting notes in the Gitter channel is not sufficient enough? Well, it's useful to go back and see what the uh, meet, minutes are for people who don't attend the meetings. So would you just not have that bookmark somewhere? I, I guess what we're trying to do is limit. So in your, uh, originally you had asked in Gitter to have this information put at the top of the topic uh, of the Gitter channel. The reason that I find that difficult is because now we have to maintain multiple places where there's a link or documentation to something. In the calendar invite, which is on the Jenkins community uh, event site, it has the uh, the link to the doc in the calendar invite. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid if if a doc gets messed up and we have to switch or the Zoom link we have to change. I don't want to have to do it in multiple places. That becomes unmanageable. So I think is is Liam uh, yeah is I've Liam got it. Screen? Yeah, yeah so I, I, I've looked at like uh, the u user experience sig. Yeah, and I guess that's a doc. They have a link to the meet, uh, meeting minutes, so I mean. Yeah, I mean, and the reason we can't the, do the what, what I'm showing right now is actually the uh, the problem the problem that Marky is the meeting agenda is right, and this this sort of embeds it in the in the page. It's like wow. Um, so, uh, but we can. Th there's certainly a way to do that without actually, and it, I think it actually is right here. You can click on this, and it'll take you to the thing rather than. There's got to be a way to have it not embed that. Um, so is it is it not? I guess my question is: Is it not okay just to have it in the calendar invite, which is on the events page? Because again, if I put it in multiple places and something changes, then that means somebody has to be responsible to go to multiple places to make the change, and that's what I want to avoid. Uh, fair enough. Um, let me think about this for a second. I just got four. Da, da, da. Um, I'm just following sort of the consensus. Um, da, 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 da. You know, I, I think if we can, the, the, the link to the document, I mean, you could always post it, uh, figure out a way to post it as a tiny URL such that it, um, 
so that it, it redirects automatically. You could go and redirect it from one place if that if it really matters in that respect. Um, but I, I think we should try and follow some, you know, the consistent behavior from other SIGs. So it seems like, and it seems like that's this posting the the agenda in some form. So some of them are embedded in it by doing PRs even. So I, I think the, the link is probably a reasonable choice. It just lets people see the history of, of what we talked about more easily. And even if that costs us something, it's probably worth doing. Um, okay, uh, I'll, I'll take that action item and I'll, I'll, I'll work with you on it, Liam. Great, thanks. Uh, future caps. Okay, great. I'm just finishing up this note in terms of uh, things I want to discourage. Um, and the point there is, is that we, we just need people to keep talking about them. So, all right. Um, anything else? This has been a really good meeting. I, it's been a, a really good discussion. <laughs> Agreed. Does anybody have anything else? If not, I will give everybody five minutes back. No, thanks everyone. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. I will go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you. Oh, honey, wait, wait, Liam, you have to stop it. I made oh, you I have to stop. <laughs> okay, stop sharing. And save it to the cloud. Uh, okay, where do I? And okay, stop the recording. Uh...